Hi everybody and welcome to This Made My Week, a weekly show dedicated to good news, inspiring stories, and uplifting information. Today, like every single week, we're going to be talking about my son, about music, about politics, and about the magic of listening. So let's get started. I want to start this episode by celebrating the fact that my husband and I, we left our almost two-year-old son overnight for the very first time in his life with his grandparents and it was a complete and total success. For us, it felt like we were going to the funeral. We were so sad and emotional. <laughs> it got better once we got there and the music started. But yeah, so we were not okay. Our son was totally fine. He did release his emotions the next day when we came back after a couple of hours, maybe less, hanging out. He did cry and we held him and you could definitely see that those were stored up emotions, the sadness, maybe some anger, some fear, but he cried for maybe like three minutes. And that was that. So new milestone unlocked. I'm sure many parents will be able to relate to this anxiety and to this joy as well. So. Shout out to all the parents, but I also wanted to share a thing that made my week. It was the performance by fabulous, talented, gorgeous human being, Jacob Collier. Oh, he was performing here in Lithuania for the very first time. And the event space where it was, it was like in the middle of the city, but was in the middle of the woods. So the area was surrounded by trees. It was the most gorgeous night, warm, sunny. There was a sunset. There were air balloons flying like above us. So it was just this, you know, this perfect, perfect night. And Jacob Collier, if you don't know him, he is this musician that can play basically any kind of instrument. And he did during this performance. It was a solo performance. Then he did what, if you know Bobby McFerrin, he does the same thing where he, plays together with the crowd. So we sang pretty much the whole night, which was so impressive. And the singing was not the easiest, you know, you could tell that the musicians were in the crowd, like the harmonies that he was playing with. Oh, it was so, so delicious. Just good vibes overall, because he is sensitive, conscious human being. So that was the kind of atmosphere that he created. It totally made my week. Check his music out. If you can go to his live event, it is so worth it. You can thank me later. Towards the end of the gig, Jacob said this beautiful thing that music is about many things. It is about mathematics, physics, biology, history, culture, but most importantly, music is about listening. And he emphasized that it is so important for all of us to learn to listen because we live in such divided times. And I could not agree with him more. You know, listening literally creates peace and magic. Do you know why? Here's what happens. So when we listen, first of all, to ourselves, when we attune to our bodies, when we attune to our inner wisdom, when we attune to our hearts, we cannot harm others. Do you know why? Because we human beings are wired for a connection. We cannot survive alone without other human beings. We need each other. This is how we're wired. So how can we harm someone whom we need? This is where the harm stops when we start to listen. And when we go from this the sympathetic state, you know, when we're in fight or flight, we go to this parasympathetic state where we are relaxed. And in this state, what happens is that our hearts beat slower. We breathe deeper. From tunnel vision, we go into this broad perspective. We can see more, understand more, and hear more as well. So that is when we start to listen to others, to their perspectives, to their worldviews, to their reality. And when we listen and when we intentionally and consciously look for points where we can connect, where we can unite, where we can together get excited about something mutual, that is when the shift happens. And from division or even fighting, 
we unite, we come together, and then we can come up with creative solutions that serve all of us. Not one party or another, but all of us. Listening is the magic power. And you know who decided to listen this week? Not to his egoic mind, but to his heart, to his deeper wisdom, is of course President Joe Biden. He listened to his heart instead of serving his ego, attaching himself to this control, uh, or serving his addiction to power. He's stepping aside and allowing this shift that is so necessary to happen. And I'm so excited to see Kamala Harris enter the race. And of course, it's not confirmed yet. We don't know if she's the official candidate, but it looks like she's gonna be the candidate and hopefully the next Madam President of the United States. And yes, I'm aware I live in Europe. I'm not American, although my family is living in uh, the US, but still, I'm in Europe. But what happens in America and how this election ends affects us and our safety here in Europe hugely. So I'm so excited to see a candidate who can beat Donald Trump and assure our safety, our sanity, our unity together. Most importantly, that women rights are not gonna be in danger. So I'm just, <laughs> Madam President Kamala Harris, I am in support, I'm supporting <laughs> And I'm doing everything that I can in my power. I'm reposting all the cool posts on TikTok, on social media. I'm so entertained by all the content that Gen Z is creating right now. Kamala Harris, you are a brat. Come and join <laughs> the party. I'm just really hoping that her team, she and her team, will be listening, that they will have a kind, compassionate, empathetic campaign. Of course, intelligent one as well. So, yay for America, yay for Kamala Harris, yay for all of our safety, and yay to a brighter future led by a woman. You know, while prepping for this episode, I came up with this theory that women tend to be better listeners. Not a given, not a rule either, uh, but they tend to be better listeners because they have to listen to their babies. First, in the pre-verbal state, they have to really attune, understand their body language, listen to, you know, all the sounds, to their cries. And then in, when they start to learn to talk, they really have to like, mm, what did you say? What does that mean? And in the past, I used to wonder, like, how do parents understand what their kids are talking? It's almost like they're talking gibberish. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> but now that I am in this stage as well, uh, like I said, my almost two-year-old son, now he's learning to talk, I understand what he's saying 95% of the time. And to be fair, his vocabulary is really broad. He's actually a really good talker. I often don't see him, but I always hear him because he's definitely a storyteller and narrator. He explains everything that he sees or does. So, but anyways, I wanted to share this cute com conversation that we had the other day. So we went to buy some rocks because my mom is decorating her garden. And this is the second time that we're going there and I'm taking him because there are huge trucks and there's a train and all of that and trucks are life right now and specifically tractors and buses are life for my son. So any way I can entertain him, I choose to do that. So anyways, I took him there and we were waiting in the car because there was this truck in front of us and we couldn't go around and he explained everything that was happening. He said, did it then, which means a man over there. And I said, yes, did it then. He said, did it, tapu tapu. He said, did it, walks there. He said, yep, tapu tapu. Did it, apapa. Apapa means he climbed uh, the stairs to his truck to get into his truck. It's like, yeah, the man went up the stairs to his truck. Then he said, boom, which means that he shut the door, boom. And then he drove off. Boom. A perfect explanation of what was happening. And I understood everything that he was saying. This 
totally made my week and I love his age at the moment. He talks so much and we're having these types of interactions all the time. It's just the cutest. It always makes my day, my week, my month and I don't know, I would really wanted to share this with you. All right, and the last thing that I wanted to share with you, I thought, why not you and I, we practice our listening by listening to good music. I am a music snob and I always try to look not only for a good music, but also I look for the vibe. I do care about musicians and who is creating the music, who is writing the lyrics because I want the lyrics and music to be intentional and meaningful so you know I go into deep dives and my research stuff when I have the time if I have the time I used to do that a lot more often back in the day before having a child but anyways uh, going back to it, what I wanted to say is that I created the playlist on Spotify the link is in the bio if you want to check it out if you need some inspiration if you need new music in your playlist check it out maybe you'll like something if you do let me know in the comments or leave your current favorite song in the comments i'd love to hear from you i'm always on the lookout for good music so let me know and hook me up anyway <laughs> my millennial old millennial vibe is coming through but anyways this is a sign that it is time for me to end the episode Thank you so much for tuning in and watching till the very end, like, so grateful. Stay well, stay safe. If you want more uplifting information, go rewatch my old videos. There's so much content, so much good information, so many inspiring people. And if you want something new, come back next week for more. As always, if you have a story to share, drop me an email. I'd love to hear from you. I would share your story on this channel or you can come and have a conversation with me. Uh, cannot wait to hear from you and I'll see you next week. Bye.